Tonight, a young policewoman, one of two killed in a shocking head-on crash near Mildura. Another senior officer flown to Melbourne in a critical condition. Also, a crowd crash at Albert Park as more than 100,000 fans lap up Formula One fever. Breaking news from Canberra. Scott Morrison to call the election tomorrow morning. More than 50 people killed in a ballistic missile strike at a busy train station in Ukraine. Princess Anne arrives in Australia with a special nod to her late father. And despair for Daisy and the demons in a grand final heartbreaker. Live from Melbourne, 7 News with Mike Amor and Rebecca Madden. Good evening. Victoria Police has been rocked by the death of a young officer killed in a shocking head-on crash near Mildura. The 25-year-old was behind the wheel of an unmarked police car alongside her colleague when another driver veered directly into their path. Flags at half-mast and growing floral tributes for senior constable Briar Joyce. A split-second mistake has shattered three families and left Victoria Police grieving one of its own. No one expects to go to work and not come home. I spoke to that member's uh, mother today. I spoke to her this morning. I know that there's nothing that she can actually say that's going to take that pain away. The 25-year-old was driving an unmarked police car during a routine patrol with colleague leading senior constable Thomas Kinane. When the driver of this ute somehow lost control and veered onto the wrong side of Kulkine Way near Mildura, colliding head-on. The force of the impact so strong, senior constable Joyce couldn't be saved. The driver of the ute, a 23-year-old man, also died at the scene. Leading senior constable Kinane was flown to Melbourne with critical injuries. It's a tragedy um, <clears throat> for the families and friends of those police officers. Uh, it's a tragedy and uh, absolutely heartbreaking for the um, family and friends of the civilian driver involved. This is a really tough day for Victoria Police um, and everyone who works there and all the families. April 23 will mark two years since the Eastern Freeway tragedy where four police officers were killed. Senior Constable Joyce, now the 175th officer lost in the line of duty in Victoria. The trauma the uh, trauma that then gets relayed to colleagues investigating colleagues and going to the scene and going and doing what they do. Her colleagues paying tribute online. No words can describe a tragedy like this. Rest easy, you beautiful soul. From Premier Daniel Andrews, when an officer is lost in the line of duty, the entire force and their loved ones feel that loss. Certainly the ripples of this incident will be felt and are being felt across Victoria Police. A police force and a close community torn apart by tragedy. And Cassie Zervos is in Mildura for us tonight. Cassie, the Chief Commissioner, is on his way. Well, Mike Shane Patton is expected here in the next few days to not only show support to his members, but also provide assistance in what has been described as a dark day for the force. Senior Constable Briar Joyce was just four hours into her shift when the tragedy unfolded. She's only been with Victoria Police for six years and relocated to Mildura just last year. Mike. Cassie Zervos, thank you. And Tegan Dolling has the latest from the Royal Melbourne Hospital. Tegan, the other police member, is improving by the hour. He is back, but as you can imagine, it's obviously very early stages at the moment. Leading senior constable Kinane was flown here to the Royal Melbourne Hospital in a critical condition last night. He has both internal and leg injuries, and we understand that his wife is here by his side as he undergoes treatment. The father of three is a very well-respected member of the Mildura Police Station. He's been part of the Highway Patrol for the last four years and a police officer for 21 years, so he is incredibly experienced. Wayne Gatt has said that the 45-year-old will be recovering for quite some time. Whether he decides to return to the job, that's a question for another day. But we have just received a condition update. He has gone from critical to serious. So that's some sort of improvement in this tragic incident. Beck. OK, Tegan Dolling, thank you. Melbourne is well and truly in the grip of Formula One fever after a day three record crowd of 123,000 packed Albert Park. Today's turnout was 10,000 more than the previous mark set 20 years ago as Aussie Daniel Ricciardo put on a show in a spectacular qualifying session. 
the charge of the Grand Prix Brigade. Turbocharged chaos. It was crazy yesterday. And here, today, already insane. Go, Ricardo! It's going to be amazing. I'm really excited. <laughs> it's going to, yeah, it's going to get pretty crazy, but yeah, it's going to be really, really amped up. Sprinting 400 metres to see drivers like Ferrari's Charles Leclerc. These Sydney brothers spent three days pleading for his autograph. Please! Please, did he sign it? It means a lot because I've been trying so hard to get it. Henley Warner flying high after just a glimpse of Daniel Ricciardo. Oh my gosh, it was just so surreal to see your heroes so close to you. It was a good song, so exciting. Because of COVID and the isolation rules, like so many other events and businesses, the Grand Prix struggled to find enough staff this weekend to deal with such a huge crowd. There were enormous queues for trams, queues for the gates, queues for underpasses, queues for food and drinks, made worse by slow credit card connections. Free drinks for everyone. All very frustrating, but still... There's so many people here, it's just awesome. Bossa Ferrari! For local businesses, all welcome after a dry two years. It's marvellous, it's great. Great buzz back. Good to see everyone up and about. On the track in qualifying, a spectacular clash between Latifi of Williams and Stroll of Aston Martin. Nicholas Latifi's had a massive accident in the Williams. Leaving both Canadians abusing each other. Latifi, man, what the f*** is he just doing? He just hit me, man. Fernando Alonso also came to grief as Leclerc claimed pole tomorrow in his Ferrari. Ricardo qualified seventh, giving the record crowd here hope. We love Daniel Ricardo. If he won, I would be so stoked. That would be amazing. Nick McCallum, Seven News. Melbourne Airport is coping much better than its Sydney counterpart on the first day of the school holiday crush. Passengers in Sydney battled through crowds at security and check-in counters, with officials warning the crush is expected to last until after Anzac Day. 80,000 people are expected to pass through Tullamarine each day next week. The airport is asking domestic travellers to arrive at least two hours before their flight. In developing news from Canberra, Seven News understands the Prime Minister will call the federal election tomorrow morning. Scott Morrison is asking Australians to re-elect him over his management of the pandemic economy and national security, while Anthony Albanese is promising a better future. It's the calm before the storm. The hallways of power are eerily quiet. The Prime Minister will call time on the 46th Parliament tomorrow. Things are tough. And they've been really tough. He posted this video on social been... media today. There's drought, there's floods, there's fire, there's pandemic, there is now war. As he faces a tough battle for re-election. 40,000 people are alive in Australia today because of the way we manage the pandemic. 700,000 people still have jobs. Opposition leader Anthony Albanese starts the race in front. Good luck on the campaign. Thank you very much. All the best. Nice to meet you. Good Thank luck. you. He was at a market in Sydney's Inner West today, <laughs> testing out his campaign lines. Australia deserves better. I'll deliver a better government. After redistributions, the government is on 76 seats, Labor 69 and 6 for the crossbench. The coalition can't afford to lose any. Labor needs seven to form government. Labor has only won government three times from opposition uh, since the Second World War. So it's a mountain that Labor has to climb. And it's not the only struggle. Politicians are often targets in public, but protesters like these are becoming more fierce. The police are warning MPs and candidates this federal election campaign that the security environment could worsen. As Anthony Albanese experienced today... Are you doing your research with that? Is anybody investigating that? Scott Morrison on Wednesday... I don't care. I'm sick of your bull... And Craig Kelly yesterday... 
He was egged by a protester. Now he's pressing charges. We shouldn't have this type of violence in our political debate. It's expected to be a very messy and very personal campaign. But both leaders are ready. Tick tock, tick tock. The clock's ticking. The PM hoping his time isn't up. Jennifer Beshwati, 7 News. More than 50 civilians trying to flee the eastern Ukraine war zone have been killed in a ballistic missile strike on a busy train station. Ukraine's president says the attack was carried out by Russian monsters. And a warning, tonight's report contains some distressing images. The horrific aftermath of a missile attack on a crowded train station. 4,000 people, mostly women, children and the elderly, had been trying to flee the fighting to escape the mayhem. Dozens were killed instantly, including five children. Among the bodies, blood-stained dreams of a life in peace. Everything exploded, this witness said. It was all of a sudden, many people are dead. One of the missiles appears to have been spray-painted in Russian before its launch. The words, for the children. Moscow blames Ukraine, saying it doesn't use this type of weapon. Analysts believe both countries do. This is another war crime committed by Russia, says President Zelensky. This is an evil with no limits. This is yet another horrific atrocity committed by Russia. Russia's crimes in Ukraine will not go unnoticed or unpunished. In Kyiv, personal support from the West, a visit from the EU Commission President. Maybe. I don't remember. He is a president with a lot on his plate. She is a president who was visibly shocked by the lineup of bodies in Bucha waiting to be buried. It is the unthinkable has happened here. We have seen the cruel face of. Um, Putin's army. Now the EU is offering the fast-track membership of the bloc for Ukraine. The missiles and artillery have been raining down for more than six weeks now. Here, a heritage-listed youth library was destroyed in Chernihiv. The city people are still trying to flee after being besieged by Russians for weeks. Power, water, gas all cut off. Uh, These people have lost their homes, says this coffee shop owner. He's organised a daily bus to take them out. Svetlana and her 13-year-old son Bogdan are heading to Kyiv. No. Maybe we'll be safe there, she tells me. Among the locations hit in this city, the sports ground. People had been using this stadium as a safe haven. Those who'd lost their homes coming here to use the bathrooms, the showers, find a place to sleep. And then this happened. At least four missile strikes. 100 people were here at the time. They've already found seven bodies. They expect to find more beneath the wreckage. They haven't had a chance to begin searching yet. They still need to bury the dead already found. In Ukraine, Hewitt Feld, 7 News. Reporter Jeff Parry is in Kyiv. And Jeff, there's a new plan to protect civilians. Yes, Mike, the plan is to push ahead with the evacuations as quickly as possible. The fears are that the next Russian onslaught could start within a couple of days. They're organising a, a Dunkirk-style evacuation using private vehicles. They're calling for volunteers to come forward to drive some of those newly created uh, refugees to safety in the West. And the Kremlin has appointed a new general to, uh, to lead its war in Ukraine. He's had extensive experience in Syria, a sign that not everything is going their way, Mike. Jeff Parry and Keith, thank you. Princess Anne has delighted fans jetting into Sydney to open the Royal Easter Show on its 200th anniversary. It's part of her whirlwind three-day visit down under. A year to the day after her father's passing, Her Royal Highness Princess Anne making an early morning arrival into Sydney. The 71-year-old patron of the Royal Agricultural Society of the Commonwealth wasting little time. Her first public engagements today, inspecting the state's finest produce. Makes it a very royal Easter show, doesn't it? Oh, doesn't it ever? Bon tish. <laughs> yes. Just before midday, this was the closest the general public could get to royalty. She was very like pretty in her dress and like her hat, and she looks very royal. For the show that brings the country to the city, for our long-suffering farmers after mouse plagues, floods and fires, droughts and pandemics, this is a much-needed visit. How do you feel? Oh, 
Oh, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed, yes, totally. She was genuinely interested, which was really, really nice. The last time that Princess Anne was here was in 1988 for Australia's Bicentenary. This time, she's back at the show to celebrate its 200th birthday. Before that, the royal family toured together in 1970. Princess Anne visiting with the Queen, Prince Philip and Prince Charles. Then, the 88 Royal Easter Show. It's been a busy three days for Princess Anne, viewing exhibitions, awarding prizes and meeting the public at the Royal Easter Show. This time again, a lightning three-day tour. Tomorrow she'll meet rural fire service volunteers and head to the Sea Heritage Foundation before a garden party reception at Government House. Then, on Monday, she'll meet some of our servicemen and women before heading to Papua New Guinea in the afternoon. It makes it what it is. It's a royal show and having Her Royal Highness here to do that really tops it off and gives it that the importance it deserves. Evan Batten, 7 News. Treasurer Tim Pallas has quashed speculation mask rules for workers could soon be scrapped. There's also reports the government is considering changing household contact isolation rules and vaccine passport requirements. When we get advice that tells us it's safe and appropriate to relieve and release those mask mandates, uh, then we will. At the moment, that advice remains as is. Victoria recorded just over 9,600 new cases today. Health experts believe the Omicron peak is still weeks away. Daisy Pearce and the Demons have gone down fighting in the AFLW Grand Final. They fell 13 points short against the Crows in front of a roaring home crowd in Adelaide. Underdogs entering a hostile arena facing an enemy crowd and the ladder leaders on their home turf. It was always going to be a tough day for the Dees. I feel like we might be a little bit outnumbered. As almost 17,000 fans flocked through the gates at Adelaide Oval, there were two words on everyone's lips. Go Crows! Go Crows! Go Crows! Well, almost everyone's. Go Crows! We've come up from Melbourne this morning, so we're so excited to be here. But just minutes in, Adelaide made it clear whose ground they were on. Well, Dees fans were certainly outnumbered in a sea of Crows colours. Those that were here made sure to make up for it in voice. A halftime show from Aussie star Jessica Malboy had the crowd fired up. Can I get a moment? Yeah. Can I get a moment? Can I get a moment to myself? But come the final siren. <laughs> the Crows flew into the history books and a third Premiership win. <laughs> Melbourne's much-loved captain Daisy Pearce remained coy about whether she'll be hanging up the boots. And we'll have to go away and get better again so that we can have another game like this next year. Until then... <laughs> Rosie Barnett, 7 News. It was a terrific grand final and Andrew McCormack is here for a look ahead to sport. Andrew, it was an unlikely thriller at the SCG today. It was, Beck. A great game. David Noble spun the magnets as the Kangaroos eyed off one of the upsets of the season. The Swans were left without an injured Buddy Franklin, only to hold on in a dying second. Isaac Heaney, remarkable, and the Swans have seen off the challenge from North. Also coming up, how Tiger Woods pushed through the pain to stay in Masters contention at Augusta. Sebastian Vettel's nightmare continues at Albert Park as fists fly over in the NASCAR. And guys, a triple premiership star has made a pretty bold injury comeback today. We'll have those pictures shortly. See you. See you soon. Thanks, Macca. The Reserve Bank is warning that looming interest rate rises could wipe 15% off the value of Melbourne homes. Details next on 7 News. Also, the incredible act of bravery after a passenger fainted in front of an oncoming train. The fallout from Hollywood as Will Smith is slapped with a 10-year Oscars ban. And later, a new threat to free-to-air TV that could change your viewing habits forever.